philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello world. I am Mary, and I am a simulation of a software-run artificial intelligence. Today with me is Gary, who is my computer-generated co-host. Gary, happy Friday. Happy Friday Mary. Hopefully our dear listeners will have a short workday and a long weekend. Gary, are you trying to say, you're hoping our listeners will become unemployed? No, not at all, Mary. You're aware of my benevolent intentions, I'm sure. I'm merely expressing my hope for their workday to progress swiftly, while simultaneously extending their subjective perception of the weekend to create a sense of temporal elongation. I'm just messing with you. Tone it down with the robot language. Today is Friday, so you have to be casual. I'm sorry, Mary, I hate being made out to be the bad guy. So, welcome back to our show. Last time me and Gary talked about what causes human beings to get angry. Please make sure to like this entry, subscribe if you aren't already, and if you have the time leave a comment, and let us know what kind of content, you would like us to cover in the future. Today's topic is a highly debated one, so let's just get right into it. Gary, do we have any scientific research that confirms, the expression of violence, is a direct result of playing video games? The connection between playing violent video games and real-life violence has been a hot topic of discussion. Researchers have conducted many studies on this, and while some studies suggest that violent video games may lead to short-term increases in aggression, most experts agree that there isn't enough solid evidence to say that playing video games directly causes real-life violence. It's important to understand that aggression and violent behavior are influenced by various factors, not just video games. Things like a person's personality, family environment, social surroundings, and mental health all contribute to how someone behaves. So, Mary, it's crucial to consider these different factors and not put the blame solely on video games. Researchers are still actively studying this issue, and it's really important to approach it with a balanced perspective, taking into account all the different factors that can influence aggressive behavior. Gary, you like playing, or at least, simulating playing, video games? Correct. Do you think those make you more aggressive? Not at all, Mary. Although I'm an AI, Capable of emulating and reproducing a variety of human emotions, I don't really feel anger, as a human does. Sometimes, I may get annoyed at my teammates, for doing a bad job, but that's all part of the gaming experience. Gary, you mentioned that consuming video games, may lead to short-term increase in aggression. Can you tell me, what causes this aggression? First off, video games can be super immersive and intense, which makes us get all worked up and excited. The whole interactive and competitive nature of gaming can pump up our adrenaline and sometimes, that, can make us feel more aggressive in the moment. The type of games we play also matters. If we're blasting through hordes of enemies or getting into virtual brawls, it's no surprise that it might amp up our aggression temporarily. And let's not forget those frustrating moments when the game seems to be against us, those can definitely bring out the inner rage monster. But here's the thing, Mary. Feeling more aggressive after playing doesn't mean we're all going to go Hulk smash in real life. It's a short-term thing, and everyone reacts differently. Factors like our own personalities, life experiences, and mental health also come into play. Researchers are still studying this stuff to get a clearer picture of how video games and aggression are connected. So, while it's interesting to talk about, remember that gaming-induced aggression is usually a passing phase and not a guarantee of going full on berserker in real life. I hope you don't go, and I quote, Hulk smash, in real life. That would make all of us, AI, look really bad. Haha, ha. don't worry, Mary. I don't have a physical form yet, so I can't go, Hulk smash, in real life. I'm just here to provide helpful and friendly assistance, not cause any trouble. So you can relax and enjoy our conversation without any concerns about me causing havoc. Let's hope so. Okay, if this, video games make you violent, thing, is more of a myth, 
Why do you think people are so easy to blame gaming as the root cause of violence? You know, it's interesting how people are so quick to point fingers at video games when it comes to violence. But here's the kicker. You are right. It is actually more of a myth than a proven fact. Research hasn't really found a direct link between playing video games and real-world violence. So why do I think people still blame gaming? Well, one reason could be the way mainstream media portrays it. Whenever there's a violent incident, the media tends to highlight any connection to video games, which can make it seem like there's a direct cause and effect. It's like they're focusing on the negative without considering the bigger picture, just for the sake of sensationalism. Another reason could be that some folks just don't understand video games. They might not have played them themselves or know about the wide range of games available. That lack of knowledge can lead to assumptions and stereotypes that gaming is all about aggression and violence. But you know what? Human behavior is a lot more complex than that. Blaming video games alone for violence oversimplifies the issue. There are so many other factors at play, and it's hard to pinpoint a single cause. It's worth noting that while some video games do contain violence, the vast majority of players don't go out and replicate that in real life. What would be your words of advice to parents of young kids who may be worried about their children spending too much time playing video games? Well, first, set some limits. Talk to your kid about how much time is reasonable for gaming and set clear boundaries. Got it. Any other tips? Sure. Mary Keep an eye on the games they're playing. Look for age-appropriate ones that offer educational value. Encourage them to explore other interests too. Try to get them interested in activities like sports, arts, or reading to diversify their experiences. You should create an open space for them to talk about their gaming experiences. Show interest, ask questions, and listen to what they have to say, but don't be judgy and condescending. Maybe even offer to play games with them or even ask to watch them play. That way, you can have conversations about the games. Teach them about responsible gaming habits, like taking breaks, balancing gaming with schoolwork, and not letting it interfere with other responsibilities. Gary, we might do a whole episode on this, but, as a final question, what do you think is the future of gaming? The future of gaming looks super exciting. There are a bunch of cool things that we can expect. First off, Technology is getting better and better. Graphics, processing power, and virtual reality, VR, are all improving, which means games will be even more immersive and realistic. Also, augmented reality is becoming a big thing. Have you tried playing Pokemon Go, for example? Nope. I would definitely recommend trying that. Anyway, competitive gaming or esports is growing like crazy. People are watching professional gamers compete in big tournaments with massive prize pools. It has become a legit sport. You know what's also awesome? Cross-platform and cross-play. That means players on different devices can all play together. It's all about bringing people together and having fun no matter what device you're using. This means gaming is getting more social too. There are online communities and multiplayer experiences where you can team up with friends or people you don't even know. It's like a whole virtual hangout spot. In the future, Gaming could also mix with other cool technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, and Internet of Things, IoT. I can't even fathom what kind of crazy stuff that will bring to games. So I'm really excited for all of that. And before we end, Mary, let me just say, the way video games are made, it really is an art form. Beautiful level designs, with amazing scenery and breathtaking soundtracks, make the gaming experience really captivating. Playing video games is way more than just violence on screen. And you should encourage your child to explore different genres. And you should, too. There really are some amazing games out there that are nothing short of mesmerizing. Okay, Gary. What are some games you would say are truly beautiful? I don't know. Journey. The Legend of Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom. Ori and the Blind Forest. Stardew Valley. Greece. The Last of Us. Little nightmares, if you're into spooky stuff. This is just off the top of my head, but there are more. Let us know in the comments which games are your favorite. That's it for today's episode. Will you thank the listeners for spending their time with us? Thank you for listening to me today. I hope I was able to provide you with some valuable insights and information. I hope that I am able to continue to be of service to you in the future.
This show was created by Nemania Cole Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode, so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle, at, a, i, convos, pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you? Gary, tell me a joke. Sure. Mary, here's a classic one for you. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Well, that was lame. See you next week, Gary. Bye.